slowly but surely I'm finding time to get some things together and I hope you like my 18% gray I just got this light box and um, figured to make a video in it so let me know how you like it all right so this is the four eyed I'm gonna go over the frame the design the philosophy the concept what it's intended for and um, the future of where this is going in this particular video so first of all what was this design really intended for so this overall design was created to take advantage of the more recent electronics that we have today which are the DJI components and the uh, the whoop boards honestly the toothpick boards or whoop boards the overpowered whoop boards that now do 6s and 45 amps and they're crazy and so the concept behind this was to create as small of a package as possible with the DJI system on board that will perform really really well and so from a lot of my experimentation with smaller quads I have recognized that the weight distribution of anything below 5 inch is really paramount to how well it performs and how it's going to fly. So uh, for a freestyle frame, top mount battery, won't really tolerate anything but a top mount battery. And I wanted to bring that battery as low as possible. Now there is one effect on quads where if you, if you bring the battery and the GoPro or anything on the top down right at the prop level, then you run into this issue where the quad just kind of feels dull. And my theory to around that is that the the thrust or the, the the thrust coming off the side of the prop disc is just running into the battery and the camera, and it's just making the prop feel like it's more in a static environment. So the motors and the ESCs and everything have to work harder to execute the commands that you're giving it. So you really want to have this kind of flow through, and you want to have your prop line at least just a millimeter above the top plate or really just a little bit below the top plate so that you can actually get flow through the middle of the frame and have really nice release of the thrust coming off the prop disc. And so I'll talk about the motors, but the motors are really flat and lend themselves to that really nicely. Anyways, moving on with the frame design. Like I said, it was designed to take advantage of the more current electronics that we have access to. And I'll show you that on this one. This is the five inch version. And you can see the build structure of this is intended to just be a whoop board or an all-in-one board and the DJI unit. And uh, I have intended the DJI unit to be put in the back, but um, originally the DJI system doesn't have a wire long enough to kind of traverse through the frame for the camera in the front. So we now have longer wires in the store as well, which is really nice. And the ones that we sell at FPV Cycle, they actually have longer wires by default. So it should actually fit fine. The quad that I have built here, which is an absolute mess. <laughs> uh, actually, I did manage to put the DJI unit in the back. Oh, earlier on, the wires were a lot shorter, so they didn't quite fit in the back, and I had to put one in the front, which is not what I'd recommend. So the let's continue with the frame design. So the frame design is um, pretty obvious, if you look here. Um, the arms are somewhat interesting because they're sort of they're shaped like this, and the concept behind the arm being shaped like this is that um, try to reduce the weight as much as possible. But if you see here, you have access to all of the stack screw screws from the, the actual bottom, like the actual plate that they go into. There's no like holes cut out of the bottom brace to be able to drive move your driver through, and you can actually put the screws straight into the frame after you've already put it all together. So the whole point here was to get the the screws that are holding the arms on out of the way so that you can take advantage of the entire 15 millimeters of the build height because when you only have 15 millimeters you really don't have much to work with so you got to have access to all 15 of those millimeters you can't have like a screw underneath you so the point of this little arm jig design here was to move the the hole that, that braces the arm out of the way of where your platform might be so that you can mount your electronic cleaner and easier uh, also the, st the, screw the standoff here that goes through the mid plate, that actually gives it a lot of rigidity. I did that on the um, Cinesplore as well. It's like a little trick that I had, had up my sleeve for a while. It really does help a lot with overall rigidity and, and sturdiness of the whole frame. The way this center standoff actually works is a little bit different. You can see the top plate here is bowed just half a millimeter, and that's because this overall total height is actually 19.5 millimeters because of the, the thicknesses of the carbon, and the standoff is 20 millimeters. So that bow shape, the reason why this standoff even exists there is to protect the DJI unit. You don't really need that standoff in the middle. It's just that if you kind of somehow come really hard, come down really hard on the camera and somehow crack the frame and crack the top plate, 
that carbon could go shoving itself right down onto the DJI unit. And above everything else, the whole point of this frame is to protect the DJI unit and protect the expensive components. That's why it's got these uh, vertical plates on the sides here as well. So that center screw is really useful, and the fact that it has tension on it is even better in my eyes. The slots on top here and the top plate here, you can see it has been, it's got countersunk holes here, and it is a 1.5 millimeter top plate, so it's really thin. So these countersunk holes are, the actual countersinking of the hole is two millimeters deep. That's why they kind of look rough around the edges because the countersinking goes beyond the thickness of the carbon. But the reason why it's countersunk there is so that you can run a battery with no uh, battery pad on top. And that's really nice because battery pads add weight. While they're very useful, they're not really necessary as long as you have proper you know, tension on the battery strap. And if you look at the way the battery strap weaves through the top plate also, it actually weaves through the top plate. So you have a little bit of a battery pad from the strap itself and it grips the battery really nicely on top as well. So there's really no worry about it slipping off and you got a big camera in front of it so it's, it's not going anywhere. Moving on with the rest of the frame, the front end of the frame is pretty unique. You can look at the build guide and uh, see how it goes together. It's, it took me about a month and a half to come up with how to put this front end on in a nice durable way such that it'll stay on when you take the top plate off and it'll actually hold up to things in crashes. The vertical plates here are 1.5 millimeters thick. I would have considered two millimeters, but I, I mean, I've crashed it a bunch and I haven't had any issues with it. If you really hit it hard, yeah, you're probably gonna break those vertical plates, but it's giving you more protection than just plain standoffs, because standoffs bend and also the camera usually protrudes a little bit past the standoff. So it's, it's about the same protection as anything. And uh, well, it's, it's more protective from bumps and scrapes. So you're not, gonna, you're not gonna scratch your lens as easily. And that's really more of what I'm worried about. If you look at the DJI camera, it sits well behind the carbon plates. You don't see the carbon plates in the video. And so it's nicely protected. So moving on to the rest of the, of the build, you'll see that on top here, there is a platform for a GoPro and it has press nuts in there so that you can actually just unscrew and re-screw down your GoPro with only four screws. There's no more nuts, there's nothing to deal with. You just unscrew them and pop them on. And this platform is the same platform that is on the Cinesplore. It's on the Cineglide, Cinesplore, Cineglide, and future frames that will come out will have this platform as well or as close to it as possible. It'll be compatible with uh, the GoPro mounts and any mounts that you have already. So the whole intention of this design was to be a small platform to carry DJI. But once I was done setting it up the way, setting up the way I wanted it to, to be with the battery as low as possible and 50 millimeter build height, which is a minimum height that will fit the DJI unit without any issues, uh, I had my, my boards and everything stacked sideways. And so then it ended up being this long fuselage and I'm like, why should I bother putting three inch on this? It might as well be a four inch. It's gonna perform better as a four inch anyways. And so, and then it was a four inch and then it got the name four eyed like fluoride. <laughs> and so there was also a five inch version. And these are the five inch arms. And the only reason the five inch version exists is because it can. And while it performs really well as a five inch with the 22 or three motors, the problem is that the arms are really long and they're three millimeters thick. So it's more fragile. So if you're gonna pick up a five inch version, I would recommend that you actually have experience flying. So it's not really intended to crash a whole lot. It's gonna hold up okay, but these are really thin long arms. So take that into consideration. The four inch version is really nice and, and sturdy. It's not super duper durable, but it is pretty darn durable. It feels really sturdy in the hand. And overall the build structure is really unique and really nice and holds up pretty well so far. There are a couple more options. There is this um, antenna mount on the back here as well as these little M2 press nuts which are designed to also hold the antenna mount antenna for DJI. So this thing is really geared towards DJI but you can run analog on it as well. But these are intended to hold the DJI antennas and it's a really nice option. You can have the antenna mounted on the side here or on the back here, and it works out really nicely. So now let's take a look at the actual build. 
So I showed you this a couple times. That's the overall, that's it. That's all you need. You don't need anything else. If you have the DJI Vista unit, um, and if you have the controller, you really don't need anything else. It's just these two, and uh, the camera goes in, and you wire up your motors, and you're good to go. But looking at this overall build, let's talk about the actual build spec and setup of a quad. So whoop board plus Vista and the camera I would recommend is either a GoPro Session or a Insta360 Insta Go camera because that's really what this frame was intended to carry, kind of lower weight uh, cameras. And with those cameras, I mean, I'm, I'm this quad with this setup and this power and this performance with the 2203 3000 kV motors on 4S, it performs as well as all of my 5-inch quads from a year and a half ago in terms of its ability to carry the GoPro well. And that you'll see that in the flight video that it can carry the GoPro really well, pulls out of dives really cleanly, really smoothly, has no issues flying around, and it's it's totally fine. Now, less weight obviously is always better, but that advantage comes really from the motors and the way the motors work. So let's talk about the two primary setups that I would recommend on this particular quad. So the 2203 motors, first of all, have an advantage in the sense that they are a micro mount. They are 12 by 12 M2 mount, but they are five inch-ish size motors. So in the past, 220X, any height, four, five, six, has been a five inch motor traditionally. Now we're up to 2207 and 2306 motors. And honestly, those are really the standard motors that I would recommend for five inch. I really wouldn't recommend much smaller than maybe a 2305. But um, yeah, so what does that mean for 2203s and 2204s and 2205s? To me, that means they're more four inch motors rather than five inch motors, because clearly they're not cutting it on five inch for us to continue using them on five inch. So the, this 2203 was really designed for the Cinesplore for a Cine Whoop, but the 3000 kV, not this 3400, 3450 kV, was intended for four inch and five inch. Now there are two primary setups on this quad, which I would recommend. One is the 3000 kV motors with the Gemfan uh, 4023 props and 4S battery. This 4S battery is a pretty unique battery. It is um, the highest C rated cell for, from GMB in 1100 milliamp size packaged in a 4S battery. And that combination is really nice, really powerful, relatively light, about four, what you see here is about 450 grams all of weight, although my wires are an absolute mess. I have not <laughs> taken any care of uh, reducing the weight on this thing. Or you can go with the 3450 KV and 3S batteries. Now this is actually unique. This is a battery that has not been made before as far as GMB tells, tells us. This is their highest C-rated cell in 1100 milliamps in the 3S package, which doesn't exist. Maybe it does, I don't know, but they have told me that they've never made it before. So that's what we had made because it's the right battery for the setup and it's the right battery for the quad and it fits the Cinesplore and other configurations as well. And so the difference between the 3S and the 4S configuration is gonna be that the 3S configuration is gonna be about 10% slower. That's about it. My preference is actually to run the 3450 kV motors on the 4023 prop and 3S just because it just feels a lot more comfortable to fly. It's less aggressive. It's less angry. It's just easier to control overall. But I have this set up with the 4S because I had previously had the 3S motors on there and the 3S battery. And so this is what I have on the quad right now. So let's talk about the motors and why these motors actually have a little bit of an advantage over most other 1407, 1408 motors or any other motor of that size. So this motor is a, as I explained, it's, it's really more of a five inch size motor, but it's built a little bit more like a micro motor as well. So it does have a C-clip on the bottom. That's because it's lighter to have this three millimeter shaft on the motor and um, a C-clip rather than a four millimeter shaft and a screw. While that would have fit in this motor, it, it would have driven up the cost more and it would be more weight on the motor. So that, aspect of the motor is the only aspect that's built more like a micro motor but even in that that area micro motors typically have two millimeter shafts and this is a three millimeter shaft so so the durability of the shaft on this motor and overall the construction of the motor is going to be higher than the, the 
pretty much any any of those micromotors that are out there because they all almost all of them at least as far as i've seen have two millimeter shafts i think there might be one or two that have three millimeter shafts and two millimeter shafts tend to bend now the prop shaft on this is the is an m5 just a regular prop shaft we do have a version of this motor if you look on the product listing that has the t-mount and if you want to run t-mount props then that's great uh, the other aspects of this motor that are advantageous are that is that the overall width of the motor is obviously a lot bigger than 14 or 16 size motors or even 18 size motors and the advantage that the width gives you is that it drives the torque of the motor lower in the rpm range and typically that's the range where we're doing most of our work and that's that's the range where we need the best control to get the quad to do what we want it to do and so it's advantageous to have more of that torque in the lower throttle range now the downside of that is that it is quicker, it, it generates a lot of thrust early on in the throttle range, which I, I don't particularly like, but that's where the GemFan 4023 props come, in, come into play. They are a very nice docile prop and uh, they really tame down the low end of the throttle and they're really fantastic at high RPMs and they're really low weight, so they have a really, really great response. Overall, the combination of this motor with that prop is a fantastic combination and it's really hard to go wrong with that setup. The final area where these motors do have an advantage over other narrower motors is that the bell is bigger, so the circumference is more, and so the magnets are wider, and so the ratio of space between the magnets to the actual magnets themselves is better. So you have more magnet going around the bell than you do spacing compared to a narrower motor. And what that means is that there's just more interaction between the stator poles and the magnets themselves and so you have a smoother running motor now smoother running is really hard to explain over video very hard to convey in general but when you feel it the throttle just feels more accurate and more not crisp it actually feels smoother as in you actually get what you're asking for on the throttle now that's also a combination of the torque as well but this smoothness aspect actually comes from discussions with some of the engineers, which we've come to this conclusion that that's probably what's happening. Anyways, pick up this setup if you'd like and um, show me. I mean, I love seeing the builds that people put together. So post them in the Facebook group and send them to me and show us what you've got. Thanks for watching. Floss your teeth. And um, oh, I forgot to talk about the future. So I'm, I'm working on a couple other designs that are based around this thing. And um, one aspect that I really, really like about this frame or this particular design and the reason why it's low like this is because the camera actually sits below the top plate here and so you can fly really low to the ground and your props just barely or don't even touch when your camera is on the floor so you can see the ground really clearly and easily with the altitude that you're flying so i'm working with that same kind of concept and working on other things in the future around that concept that's it floss your teeth take care bye